up fellas, Mike from Tech BB, and today we're going to talk about the X. Now I'm sorry if there's a little bit of an echo, uh, our other camera that we usually use for the videos is starting to die, and uh, so I had to use a backup camera, but that's okay. Anyway, let's talk about the Empire X. Now, you guys know I've never been that big of a mini fan. I had one of the 1.1s and the 1.2s many, many years ago, was not a big fan of it, I had a lot of problems with mine. Unfortunately, to Key or you know Empire's detriment, they improved the Mini throughout the years. They just never told anybody that they did it. <laughs> you know, very you know savvy Mini owners ended up just kind of taking the guns apart, and then they started comparing parts. Like, oh, okay, look at that. You know, there's a little bigger hole drilled here. Or there's not a hole drilled here. Or there's a notch, you know, drilled here. Or there's a different O-ring here. So there's a lot of things that they did to the Mini to make it better throughout the years. They just never told us about it. So you know, with the exception of like the 1.1 and 1.2 board. Other than that, we never had any idea that they were actually improving it. And I think that was kind of a mistake on Empire's part because, you know, if somebody has a, a bad experience with a product, well, they'll be willing to give it another shot if they know that the problems were corrected. Well, no one ever knew. They just knew that the minis just kept getting better. They just never quite knew why. So, um, you know, fast forward now to a couple of years, they've now released the Axe. And the Axe, it, it, you know, unfortunately, even though it looks kind of like the Mini when you first look at it. It's got a lot of space uh, in between the trigger frame and the, uh, you know, the front grip and stuff like that. It's a lot bigger gun than the Mini. I, got, I really got to stress that because I know a lot of people, the first thing when they look at these guns, they're going to be turned off because at first glance it looks just like a Mini. But in the hands, it doesn't feel like a mini at all. Um, the you know the trigger frame is you know the the grip frame is stretched forward here and it's got a nice trigger now. Instead of using the I don't know if it was using a Hall or Reedy style magnet, uh, it now uses a micro switch. Micro switch is up here at the very top of the uh, you know up here at the very top. So when you pull the trigger, it goes up and clicks the micro switch. Definitely helps it. Has the magnet in the back just like it always did in the past. It's got post and pre travel, so you've got a lot of uh, you know, you've got a lot of adjustments on the trigger and it definitely feels really good. It's curved the way it should be. It also has ball bearings, which is a nice upgrade. But I really have to stress, you know, even in my hands, one of the things I can always tell with guns that are a little too small in my hands is when I go to grip them, my palm will actually go into the trigger frame, causing my fingers to bounce off of it. Now, I don't really get that too bad with the axe. Um, you know, if I grab it up here, you know, you can see with my hands wrapped around it that my palm doesn't really go into the trigger frame. There's a lot of space here between the back of the trigger frame to the front of the foregrip. Almost about as much as I'd say probably like a G6R or Lux. There is a lot of space here between here. So for a lot of people to say, oh, you know, the Mini was way too small, put an axe in your hand. But the other thing I'll tell you about these guns is, just like the Mini, there's not a lot of user serviceable parts in these things. They do not want you going in here and completely taking it apart and stuff like that. Um, especially now with the new bolt out the back that it has, um, you know, taking apart your grip frame, there's a little slide in there and some springs and stuff like that that are holding it in place. Um, there's definitely not a lot of user serviceable parts. But one good thing that they did do is they now allow you to do the bolt out the back, which is just as simple as you push, there's a button right here on the very back. You press the button and it does a little zigzag um, and out comes the bolt assembly. There we go. And that's about it. You run your swap through it. Now the spring is conical, so it's a little smaller on one side than it is on the other. The smaller side goes down into the bolt. And um, that's it for the uh, you know for the maintenance. Put your favorite lube on there. Push it back into place. Now, one thing that is kind of cool is that you can't just press the button here on the side and the bolt shoots out. Okay, that's not gonna happen. It actually has to, there's a bolt pin that has to go to the left, then back, go back to the right, then out. So there's a little bit of a zigzag pattern. So even if you hit that button when you're out there on the field, doesn't matter because you have to zigzag the bolt to get it out of the back of the gun. Nice touch. Something else I noticed too is as opposed to the mini, you know, the detents are in a much better position now. Sometimes I don't remember if all the minis you've noticed, sometimes the detents weren't exactly aligned. Not the case with this. Um, you know, the barrel is still looks like a 12 inch barrel, still pretty much close to the same clamping feed neck and stuff like that. But one of the biggest things that they integrated now was the Flip ASA. I don't know if you guys remember, I highly recommend it if you had a Mini to pick up some Tri-Flow to put into the ASA to lubricate the threads before you screw it in because it was very difficult to screw the tanks in and out. You can get, you pick up Tri-Flow if you want to, macrolineguy.com, that's where I get it from. And, but this nice little quick flip ASA 
definitely works really, really well. Just put your, you know, put it in there, flip it. It's not in the way. You can't bump it. But I really like this gun. I was, I was just like, man, I'm waiting for that gun to break paint. God, I can't wait for that gun to break paint. Didn't break paint. Okay, now I know it's not exactly freezing here in Florida. I mean, I think I was playing in between 40 to 60 degree weather. But still for, you know, when I'm shooting, you know, RPS premium or I'm shooting even Evil from World Cup. I was also shooting uh, premium gold and stuff like that. Never broke a single paint with the, uh, never broke a single paintball with this gun. And um, it, it just, it's just been a, you know, a, a big, big surprise the whole time I was using it. I mean, I love the fact that the trigger guard is nice and big. I can use full finger gloves and get my fingers in here. I got plenty of room here to walk the trigger, to move around, you know, full finger uh, gloves inside there. But um, I'll go, let's go ahead and take it outside really quick. We're gonna do the efficiency test on the gun. Then we're gonna come back and weigh it and uh, we'll do the conclusion. And I think you guys are gonna be pretty impressed with how well it did on the efficiency. All right, so we're about to do the efficiency test on the ax. Well, you can see, it looks like we've got about, looks like it's about 4,400 PSI. And let's go ahead and take a tank temperature reading. And it looks like we're sitting at about 88, 89 degrees. And we'll go ahead and shoot a couple over the chronograph here. Good to me. All right, what's your name? Curtis. Curtis. All right, Curtis is gonna do some work for us. So go ahead, uh, we'll just shoot it till it's empty. Okay, now out of the uh, uh, the, um, the Empire X, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half pods. Okay, now something I wanted to do really quick was just to kind of emphasize the additional reach of the of the Empire X. Is there, you know everyone's talking about you know how you know how the G6R feels so good in the hands and the side and the other because it's got a little extra length. It's something that a lot of people really liked about the Lux is the additional length and stuff like that. So I'm going to measure basically from this little ridge right here to the foregrip to show you about how much length we've got here. 
and it looks like we're measuring at just about six and a quarter inches pretty much from about right there to about right there. Let me see if I can hold that up with one hand and get that close. So as you can see we're sitting at about six and a quarter inches and now let's slide this aside over here and let's go ahead and measure it with the G6R. Okay and as you can see uh, we're sitting really close to, you know, we're sitting just a little over with the G6R. Um, we're sitting at about six and a quarter inches as well. Uh, from the regulator to the, uh, from the front of the regulator to the back of the grip frame. So that just gives you an idea that we're talking about, you know, Lux G6R uh, style reach between the back of the grip frame to the front of the foregrip. And definitely, as you can see, that's, that's quite a bit of room. All right, so let's go ahead and weigh it really quick. Turn on the gun here. Let's see, we got the uh, lights turning on. We're just gonna go ahead and weigh this gun really quick. Okay, and this gun weighs in at two pounds, four ounces. Two pounds, four ounces. And let's go ahead and wrap this up. What do I think about the axe? I I really like the axe. I, <laughs> I was actually just blown away by the axe uh, from using it both on the woods, ball, you know, out there on the woods and also out there on the X-Ball field. I love the gun um, and I actually was so impressed by it that I ordered a all black axe uh, with the Apex 2 barrel and I'm going to hang up the SP1 for a little while and use the axe in the woods and see how it does. And I'll probably pull the gauge off of mine. Once you set this thing at 200 PSI, you don't really need to know what the gauge is on here because the pressure never moves and you adjust the velocity through the back of the gun. but. I really like this gun. <laughs> I really, and it, trust me, it's tough to say that from someone who's not a big fan of minis, but I really like the axe. It's shot great, it's efficient as hell, it's easy to get on the trigger, trigger feels good, it's got a bearing, um, it's got the micro switch in it, it's easy to take the bolt out, I haven't broken a single ball with it, it's efficient as hell, and, and just overall just a pleasurable gun to shoot. So, you know, I know a lot of people out there that may not have, you know, may not have ever given the mini a second chance to stand out, definitely give another look at the axe. I think you're going to be really impressed. If you give the axe a shot, at least shoot it. It, it, it. The gun shoots really, really nice. The additional weight, the extra couple ounces from the mini to the axe definitely works to its advantages. But I don't, all I can say is I really dig the gun. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't want to like this gun. I unfortunately ended up liking it enough that I'm going to be using the Living Legends. Um, I liked it enough that I'm going to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, having one as, as my woods as my scenario shooter. I'll still use SP1 for the woods ball, but you're definitely going to see me using this with, with the uh, out there in the uh, out there in the scenario games. We're almost getting 11 pods on a 68 4500. Yeah, I'm all over that. Thanks for tuning in.